Does the prospect of running on the trails at night send chills down your spine? Do you want to know what the best options for head torches and lighting are for your night run? Well, we'll be talking about all that and more in this episode, episode number eight of the Lakeland 100 training series. But first, we need to talk about last week's training. And this week is our first week of ramping the miles up. So this week we did 110 kilometers. And it's very interesting this week, looking at heart rate zone breakdown and uh, our model of 80-20 running and how that worked out this week. So up to now, I've only run once on a Monday each week. Well, this week we upped it to 20K, a 10K on the seafront in the morning, and then a 10K on Zwift in the evening. Tuesday was a hill day. So I did my film my run 500 in the morning and then we did a hilly trail run in the evening with my club. I'd love a cup of coffee here right now. Now, although it looks like I did two runs on Wednesday, it was in fact just a warm up and a run on Zwift. We did about 10K on Wednesday. Normally on a Thursday, I would do the Film My Run 500, but I had a break from that this Thursday. Um, but I ran to the shops with my son, Ellis. So that was 5K. And then in the evening, we did the Bag That Badge run on Zwift, which is a series I'm doing to help people get their achievement badges on Zwift. And that was another 5K. Friday, we did 13 kilometers on the hills, filming the last episode of this Lakeland 100 series. And then in the evening, we did 10K with Zwift on the treadmill. Another cafe. <laughs> it's so hot. On Saturday, we were helping out at the aid station at South Harting as part of the South Downs Way 100. Uh, you can see a video of that up there, which meant that I only had the evening to do a run, but it was a bit of a doozy of a run, let me tell you. I took myself to the track and I did my only hard session of the week, five by 800 meters, max effort. My goodness, was I in zone five or was I in zone five? That was hard in that heat. And then just to round off the week to make it 110 kilometers, Victoria and I did 22K on the hills on Sunday. Now, what's disappointing if we look at heart rate zones is how little time I've spent this week in zones four and five. Despite the hard effort on Saturday, the fact is it was an interval session. So some of that time, in fact, a lot of that time was still spent in zones one and two and a little bit in zone three. Unlike a race where the whole race, say it's a 5K or a 10K, the whole of that time you would probably spend in zone four and five, whereas intervals, it's probably just the last few hundred meters that you will spend in those top zones. A much nicer way to break it down and kind of more in keeping with the 80-20 rule is you break down the number of runs you did. So if we look at all the runs I did, I did 12 runs or 12 sessions this week. Uh, so one of those sessions was a hard effort. Despite the fact that I wasn't in zones four and five for the whole session, I still count it as a hard session. So that's one out of 12, which works out at around about eight point something percent. So we can say, arguably, that eight point something percent of my runs this week were a hard effort. So let's talk about night running and running with a head torch. Undoubtedly, it is an acquired skill. And the only way to get used to it, you know what I'm gonna say, go out and do it. If you're worried about it, go out with a friend. Or if you've got a running club, try and arrange a night run with your club so there's a few of you that all get to go out together and do the night run with each other. Before we go any further, do consider subscribing if you're enjoying the video. And I click that like button down below, it really helps out the channel. One thing's for sure, you'll definitely run slower at night because you've got to keep your eyes on the floor a lot more. So during the day when you're running on trails, you're looking at the floor, making sure you don't hit obstacles. Well, at night it's doubly important because half the obstacles you can't see. As well as running slower and having to watch the floor more, be aware of the halo effect. So when you're running with a head torch, 
it will create this kind of circle of light and you feel like you're trapped in that circle of light and that can be quite disconcerting if you're not used to it everything else is just a blackness around apart from your circle of light as far as safety and security is concerned well you know the score guys use live track from garmin or the beacon on strava to let people know where you are let people know that you're going out running at night if you're running in an urban area make sure you're wearing high-vis clothing on the trails doesn't matter so much there aren't that many cars on the trails plan a route as well because things often look different in the dark if it's one of the first times you've run outside at night make sure you run somewhere that you know during the day that you could easily follow just so that you don't get lost on the trails and look make sure you take your phone with you as well that's a good idea so let's talk about lighting for your night run and i say lighting because head torches aren't the only option so the main head torch companies are petzl at the top you've got silver lots of people use led lenser and you've also got Phoenix as well. And there are plenty of other companies, Decathlon, Raid Light, loads of people do head torches, but those are the main ones. The main thing to look out for when you're buying a head torch is how bright it is. And that's measured in lumens. Do not get anything less than 200 lumens. Most of the decent head torches will do at least 200 lumens. Then for something like the Petzl Nail, which is one of the top head torches, you're looking at 750 lumens. And there are head torches that go way up 1,000 lumens, 1,300 lumens. Many races that you enter will have mandatory kit, which requires you to have a head torch over 200 lumens. Next, you need to look at how your head torch is powered. And that's only relevant when you start to run long distances over multiple hours. Some head torches come with a non-removable rechargeable battery. And that means if you're running for a long time, you may need to carry a battery pack and a cable to recharge your head torch. Head torches like the Petzl Neo come with a removable back, so you can take the back off and change it for another one which has a full battery in it. Other head torches just use AAA batteries which you can replace as and when you like. But it does mean carrying a ton of batteries with you in your backpack if you're going on a long run. Do bear in mind that some races will specify in their mandatory kit list two head torches and spare batteries. So what you will often find is runners will get a main head torch like the Petzl Neo and then they'll supplement it with a spare one which is small like the Petzl Bindi for example. Now I did mention at the beginning that head torches are not the only option. Some people like running with these chest straps that you can see Victoria wearing here. The advantage of these is that the light is lower down. And the reason for that is that it shines on branches and rocks on the floor and casts a shadow. And that shadow allows you to see what's on the floor a little bit clearer. The problem with these torches is that they do bounce around a lot. If it's stuck on your head, it's pretty stable. If it's on your chest, it does tend to wobble and the light bounces around all over the place. So we're not done yet. You can also get hand torches that you can carry small ones, put in your backpack. If your head torch dies, you can use that. As an emergency, you've got your phone, but also now if you have a Phoenix 7 watch, they now come with a little flashlight on the watch, which if you are in an emergency, it will cast a decent light in front of you so at least you can find your way. So get yourself a head torch and get out there and do some nighttime trails. Next week on the Lakeland 100 training series, we'll be looking at race specific training. So what training am I doing, which is preparing me specifically for what I'll encounter on the Lakeland 100 mile race. That's it. Take care. Until next time, please do click the subscribe button and we'll see you on episode nine of the Lakeland 100 training series. Bye bye.